Hello and welcome to Monkey Business. This is Monkey Business for January 3rd, 2013. In today's afternoon coffee newser, we have Offshore Drilling Company Transocean, RIG, which owned the rig involved in the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010, agrees to plead guilty to violating the Clean Water Act and will pay a $1.4 U.S. billion fine according to a press release from the U.S. Department of Justice. Although that impacts their bottom line, shares in rig were up some 6.4% at market close. This likely due to investor relief that the company has settled the case with the Department of Justice, avoiding a long, drawn-out court battle. And car sales are up slightly in the U.S. General Motors, GM, reports U.S. sales growth of 5% in December 2012 compared with December 2011. GM was trailed by Ford Motor, F, which posted sales growth of 2% for the same period. GM and Ford both closed slightly up on the news. At market close, Ford was up 1.97% to close at 13.46, with GM up 69 cents to 29.82 per share. In other auto industry news, analysts at research firm Polk are tentatively forecasting an increase in North American production volumes towards the 15.9 million unit range in 2013, a 2.4% increase from 2012, driven by an improving economy. There are some caveats, however. Polk expects continued recovery in the industry in 2013 and 2014, says Anthony Pratt, Director of Forecasting for the Americas at Polk. The auto sector is likely to continue to be one of the key sectors that lead the U.S. economic recovery. However, we don't expect to realize pre-recession levels in the 17 million vehicles range for many years. He also adds, however, our baseline forecast hinges on Washington's ability to drift a budget plan that will avoid $600 billion in spending cuts and tax increases. More on the latest Polk report, posted January 2, 2013, can be browsed by link in the info box. Lastly, search engine giant Google, G-O-O-G, has emerged victorious from an antitrust investigation conducted by the Federal Trade Commission, or the FTC. After a 19-month probe into the company's business practices, U.S. regulators say that Google did not harm competitors by using its Internet search domains to favor or highlight its own services, such as Gmail or Google+. Beth Wilkinson, outside counsel to the commission, had this to say. Regarding the specific allegations that the company biased its search results to hurt competition, the evidence collected to date did not justify legal action by the commission. Undoubtedly, Google took aggressive actions to gain advantage, advantage over rival search providers. However, the FTC's mission is to protect competition and not individual competitors. The evidence did not demonstrate that Google's actions in this area stifled competition in violation of U.S. law. That was Beth Wilkinson, outside counsel to the commission. <clears throat> However, According to an FTC press release, Google also agrees to change some of its business practices to resolve FTC concerns that those practices could stifle competition in the markets for popular devices such as smartphones, tablets, and gaming consoles, as well as the market for online search advertising. Google is a global technology company with more than 32,000 employees and annual revenues of nearly 38 billion U.S. dollars. They were also in the news this week as they have several data centers in the U.S. and Europe and are expanding their reach into Asia. For more on that story, just click here. And now, over to Marcel for Nearly News. Take it away, Marcel. Let's talk about people in bad moods today. Uh, like uh, French actor Jared Depardieu, for example. He was so annoyed at French President François Hollande's proposal to inflict a 75% tax rate on the rich that he threatened to move to Belgium. When Gérard first heard of the plan to be taxed 75% of his income, his response was, Are you crazy? Of course, no one verifies this officially, but we feel sure this is one of the only printable things he's probably had to say about this little idea. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You can't say he said, Are you crazy about Holland's proposal if you can't verify it? Do you think he said something else? Well, he could have said anything. You can't say he did if you can't prove it. Do you think his reaction was, I love it? Well, no. But so well, we can assume he said it. But, but it's a news broadcast, Marcel. We can't assume he said it. We can only mm, report on things that are true. I can tell you something that is true. What? 
he was truly hella mad. But, but you have to verify that that's true. Were you there when he maybe or maybe not said this? No. Nope. Where were you? I was in Belgium. Then you don't even know what he said. I know what he said. What did he say? He said, 75% the hell with this, I'm moving to Belgium. He only said he was moving to Belgium, eh bien. He was moving to Belgium for the fresh air. Do you mind if I get on with my little story? Merci. Holland wasn't able to put the change over as the super tax was thrown out as unconstitutional, but Gerard is still truly vexed about it, evidently. He's so annoyed that Belgium evidently wasn't even far enough. He's planning to move all the way to Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed uh, citizenship papers for the actor this week. The wealthy people started to take permanent vacations somewhere other than France after Holland announced plans for a tax rate of 75% on all earnings over 1 million euros or about uh, 1.3 million US dollars or 850,000 pounds sterling. Let's do the math. Belgium and England tax rates currently capped it to 50%, possibility of 75% tax rate in France, scrapped at the last moment, and then there's Russia, 13%. Let us leave the tax lawyers to mumble-jumble the numbers based on all kinds of baby if this, except when that, but 13%. Hello, Russians. Privet. Bye-bye, France. I still love you, and I'll still send you vodka and lots of postcards. It'll just be from Moscow. Mm -hmm. I like the sound is 13%. Mm -hmm. Hey, Marcel? Oui? I didn't mean to be so hard on you during the broadcast. Still still buddies? Well, of course, no problem. I'm not bothered at all. I was silly. Stand you a drink? Okay. White Russians? Okay. In Moscow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>